Okay, today we're going to be talking about how to use regular plain old vanilla JavaScript to do AJAX calls instead of having to include the jQuery library just to do that. Okay, so I've got a page with two, two pre-tags, pre-formatted text tags, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do two AJAX calls, one with jQuery, one with plain old vanilla JavaScript, and I'm going to put the contents into those two pre-formatted tags. I've already written the jQuery one, so we can look, use it as an example when we're writing the vanilla JavaScript one. We're waiting for the page to be loaded. Once the page is loaded, we're making our AJAX call. I'm using the JSON placeholder website. I'm going to fetch some album data. It's just generic JSON data that we can bring down. In jQuery, there is a method called AJAX. Dollar sign, that's your jQuery object. Ajax, you call the Ajax method, it needs to be passed an object that will contain the URL that you want to get. And then there's other parameters you can set, such as the method, whether you want to use post or get or put or patch or delete. And you can also specify the data type. So we're getting some JSON back, or we're expecting to get JSON back. We're going to use the get method, and then this is the URL right here that we're requesting. Okay, so that is the basic method to call. And Ajax, do an Ajax call with jQuery. Then we've got a couple of other methods that we can chain on to the end of it. There's done and there's fail. Done is the function that will run when this has worked. So when we get the result back from Ajax, we get the data and then you can use the data. I'm going to write it out inside of this jQuery pre-tag. So we do the jQuery selector to find the jQuery element. And then we use the text method to set the contents of that to the data that came back, we're using the json.stringify. This allows us to format that data. This is just a plain vanilla JavaScript. This is not a jQuery thing. So json.stringify is not a jQuery thing. This is a vanilla JavaScript thing. Okay, now fail is the other chained method on here. And fail will run if something goes wrong with the Ajax call. Okay, so simple enough. Do the Ajax call. If it works, you do done. If it fails, you do fail. Okay, now let's look at the proper way to do it without having to rely on jQuery. Now, back when jQuery first started out, this was a fantastic thing. This saved a lot of time because you didn't have to do all of the handling. Well, what if it's IE6? What if it's IE8? What if it's Firefox? What if it's Safari? And you had all these different browsers doing things slightly differently. And there was a lot of work that went into writing that script. So this was a this was a, a no win, no uh, a no lose situation. It was just really simple to do this. Now it's actually easier to write the plain vanilla JavaScript than to use these jQuery methods. So let's take a look at that. We're going to take that URL from up above, and we're going to put it inside of a request object. So we'll say let rec equal new request. There we go. We're creating a request object. Inside of that, it takes two things. First thing, the URL that you want to get, and then an options object. And this is really a lot like what we're doing right here. So inside of this options object, we're going to say, hey, the method that I'm going to use is going to be get. Then that's really all we need to do. I mean, we could pass other parameters and things, but that's about it. So this is my request object. Now, to do the call to actually do the Ajax call, we use the fetch method. So fetch and you pass it the request. And then there's going to be a then and a catch. So fetch creates a thing called a promise in this is just a, a, a regular JavaScript thing that was introduced. Um, a promise is an object that either works or it fails. So you say, hey, try to do this thing. And if it works, let me know. And if it fails, let me know. So that's what we're doing here. We're doing an Ajax call with the fetch method. Pass it a request object. It will do the fetch. If it works, it's going to pass the result down to then. If it fails, it passes it down to catch. Inside of here, we put a function. So if it fails, I'm going to get an error object being passed in. Just like here, we have a function with an error object being passed in. Inside the then, I'm going to get a response object being passed into the function. And then in my arrow function, I'm going to take that response 
And because I know it's supposed to give me JSON back, I can call the JSON method. This will go to the response object and say, hey, give me the JSON data that's inside of you. Great. Now, I have another then, because this is also a promise. This is going to say, hey, if there's JSON data, I'm going to give it back to you. Inside of here, we create another function. So the result of this gets passed into the second then. If it fails, it goes down into this same fail, this catch method right here. So whether the fetch fails or the response.json fails, they both get sent down to the catch. So we can report the error to the client. Okay, now up inside of here, console.log, we can say this is the fetch version and data. So right here, that data, that is the JavaScript object coming out of that file. Now we want to do the same thing that we did up here. So instead of doing this, we're going to, here, I'm just going to copy this down into here so we can see it while we're writing it. Instead of doing this, we're going to target the one that's called vanilla. If we look up here, it's got the class name vanilla. So document.query selector vanilla. And we're going to be setting its text content property equal to this. So this was the part that wasn't jQuery. So we just take the same thing, just like that. There we go. Now we are going to take the data that came back from the, the fetch request, format it, and set it as the text content for this other container. So let's go take a look. And there it is. Here's the one that came back from fetch. Here's the one that came back from jQuery. They are the exact same data. There is no difference between these. They are the exact same thing. The difference is here, I'm using all plain J JavaScript. And here, I'm using the jQuery library, which means I had to include the jQuery library up above. So please try this out. Start using fetch instead of jQuery for making your Ajax calls. It really is no harder. It's about the same amount of code. We've got two thens instead of one done method. Otherwise, the structure is pretty much the same. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. If you want to learn more about Fetch, I'll put links to some of my other Fetch videos and Promises videos. And at the end of this video, you'll see the little cards popping up there. Um, I will leave a copy of this as a code gist link in the description. And as always, thanks for watching.